Good evening, this is Pamela, and you are listening to Watchmen on the Pod. Today, this is going to be a little bit a part of my testimony, my reasons for being so focused on divorce and remarriage. Now, before you marry, ask yourself three these questions, okay? For better or for worse? Sickness or in health? Richer or poorer? Heartache? Bad days? Angry words? Till death? When you say I do to the one you are marrying, you just made a binding covenant before God Almighty, and He makes you one flesh. He joins you together. No man can undo that, making you two again. Only death can. You can divorce, but as long as your partner is alive, you are to remain single. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Divorce and remarriage breaks not only your marriage covenant that God created, but breaks your fellowship with the Creator. Sin separates you from a holy God. Isaiah 59 2 says, But your iniquities have separated you between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. Once the Holy Spirit opens the truth up to you through the Holy Scriptures, he does it for more than one reason. My experience concerning this subject is an answer to prayer. When I repented of my sins and asked for forgiveness in 2017, I dedicated all that I am to the Lord. During prayer, and still now, I will ask the Father to search my heart and see if there is any wicked way in me, and to show me so I can ask for forgiveness and repent, which is turn away from those sins. He, being faithful, and wanting none to perish, even me, began to reveal things to me, and he still does. I am a work in progress, a broken vessel, that he is putting back together in his way. God hates divorce. Malachi chapter 2 verses 14 through 16 says, Yet, yet ye say, Wherefore? Because the Lord hath been witness between thee and the wife of thy youth, against whom thou hast dealt treacherously. Yet is she thy companion and the wife of thy covenant. And did not he make one? Yet had he the residue of the Spirit, and wherefore one, that he might seek a godly seed. Therefore take heed to your spirit, and let none deal treacherously against the wife of his youth. For the Lord, the God of Israel, saith that he hateth putting away divorce. For one covereth violence with his garment, saith the Lord of hosts. Therefore take heed to your spirit, that ye deal not treacherously. Well, I had been wanting to know, according to God, who is my husband in his eyes. For those who do not know, or who have never heard my testimony, I have been married and divorced five times. Yes, a real-life woman at the well. One difference, I was not living with someone who is not my husband. I am single and wanted to know who was, wanted to know was I to remain that way. And I started praying in 2017 for answers. My first marriage happened when I was only 17. He was 18. We divorced seven years later, which was both of our first marriages. My second marriage, I committed adultery. This was with his third, this was his third marriage and my second. An hour after saying I do, I had called my sister Charlene crying and told her I made the biggest mistake of my life. We were married seven years. Then I married my third husband, who was the adulterous affair from my second husband. Our divorce was final after eight years, but began at seven years. 
He was never married before, but this was my third. Again, I had committed adultery. I married my fourth husband. Yes, you guessed it. It was who I cheated on my third husband with and became my next husband. My fourth marriage was a bit more complicated. We married in a church, but I really did not want to get married. I feared this man greatly. He had beaten me severely when I was cheating on my third husband with him. And it was so bad, I was unrecognizable. Some would say, and probably rightfully so, that I deserved it. Anyway, I married him. But the minister gave me the actual marriage license to mail in. I did not mail it in. When he disappeared on me about a month later, I shredded the marriage license. And then when he came home, I refused to let him in and called the police. I told him about me shredding it. And he took off, and then he moved to Texas. I was his first wife. He was my fourth husband. My fifth husband was more like a friendship rather than a marriage. We never really shared a bed together. We were drinking buddies, basically. I slept in a lazy boy in the sunroom, and he slept in the bedroom. That was even before we got married. After marrying, our sleeping arrangements stayed the same. We were only married for two years. He was on his second marriage. This was my fifth. I am best friends with my ex-husband, my fifth ex-husband. And actually, I rent a room, the sunroom, from him, along with my sister-in-law and my best friend and her two children. My first two marriages were godless. My third is when I was born again. My fourth and fifth was godless, so I thought that God recognized my third husband, so I accepted that, but I was wrong. I have repented and have shed many tears over my adulterous life and the pattern of it. My soul was so heavy because I began to think of how many times in my life I had repented and fell away. Started when I was 13, or at least that is my first memory of it. Then throughout my life, when I was 19 and my first husband was 20, we started going to church for a while. Even after moving to New Jersey, we tried to continue to go to church. Then after my two-year-old daughter was ran over, after losing my mind for months, I repented for a while, and that was with my second husband. Then went right, went right back into the world. Then when I was married one week, to my third husband, I ended up in the mental hospital, and that is when I truly was born again. But now, looking back, every time I lay in the same bed with him, I became an adulteress again. That marriage was bound to not work, because God did not recognize it as a marriage, but an adulterous relationship. I never knew that then, and I was teaching kids as a youth pastor. I was preaching on Sunday mornings and evenings, even started preaching at other churches as an evangelist, all the while living in an adulterous relationship. I am thankful to God that he forgave me. What a shame on many accounts. But that is another testimony for another day. So I became fearful that if I had a pattern in the natural life of being an adulteress, that I had that in my flesh to be a spiritual adulteress as well. I have shed so many tears, prayers that were only groanings and things that I could not even form into words. I avoid all things that are wicked and unrighteous that may tempt me to pull away. I do not watch TV, movies, listen to the radio. I refuse to sit under a female pastor, nor will I attend any church that does not preach the death, burial, resurrection, heaven, hell, or sin. I avoid churches that have Christmas trees in their sanctuaries or have Easter egg hunts. I have removed myself off of gossip media, i.e. Facebook. I question practically everything, and I will search the scriptures for myself before I accept anything from anyone. It is not because I think I am more spiritual, because I know I'm not. I am to guard my heart and work out my salvation with fear and trembling. So I battle every single day. 
I keep sermons and teachings in my ears, or I'm reading the Bible, devotionals, or books by old-time ministers. I'll play old-time gospel, no modern whatsoever Christian music. I will listen to the Bible. Um, I believe it's Alexander Scorby who reads it on YouTube. I get at times weary and tired, but I know he is with me. I cannot let my guard down or leave any kind of door open, not even a crack for the enemy to enter into my life. The battle between flesh and spirit will not cease till the last breath in this body is exhaled. Anyway, let me continue. Then in May 2020, early June 2020, I began praying and crying out to the Lord again to help me. I was lonely. <clears throat> Sex was the very last thing on my mind. But I just wanted companionship, just to be held, walk hand in hand, tell somebody my troubles or my excitement or my concerns. Share with someone fellowship with Jesus. To have a husband over me, to be my spiritual leader, to be my covering. Someone to teach me and pray for me as well as with me. Well, in June, God answered my prayer. I began praying in 2017. And through scripture, he opened it up. Jesus' own words, Apostle Paul's teachings, jumped off the page at me. God only recognized one marriage and the other four were adulterous affairs in his eyes. No matter for what reason, the divorce did not separate what God had joined together. Fornication and adultery is not the same thing. Matthew 5.32 But I say unto you that whosoever shall put away his wife, saving for the cause of fornication, pornea, causeth her to commit adultery, mochia, and whoever, whosoever shall marry her that is divorced, committeth adultery, mochia. Matthew 19.9 And I say unto you, whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication, poor Nia, and shall marry another, committeth adultery, Mokia, and whosoever married her which is put away, doth commit adultery, Mokia. Mark chapter 10, verse 11. And he saith unto them, Whosoever shall put away his wife and marry another, committeth adultery against her. And if a woman shall put away her husband, and he be married to another, she committeth adultery. Luke chapter 16, verse 18. Whosoever putteth away his wife, and marrieth another, committeth adultery. And whosoever marrieth her that is put away from her husband, committeth adultery. 1 Corinthians Chapter 7, verse 10 and 11. And unto the married I command, yet not I, but the Lord. Let not the wife depart from her husband, but, and if she depart, let her remain unmarried, or be reconciled to her husband, and let not the husband put away his wife. Romans chapter 7, verse 2 and 3. For the woman which hath an husband is bound by the law to her husband as long as he liveth. But if the husband be dead, she is loose from the law of her husband. So then if while her husband liveth, she be married to another man, she shall be called an adulteress. But if her husband be dead, she is free from that law. So that she is no adulteress, though she be married to another man. Well, truthfully, that did not sit well with me. So I kept searching scriptures, trying to find a way out, actually. The more I searched, the more it confirmed scripture. Then suddenly, he was bringing ministers to my news feed on my YouTube channel. David Pawson, Mike Gorey, Joseph White, Zach Poonin even taught on it. 
Well, I had a choice to make. Love the truth, all of it, or pick and choose what I wanted to accept out of the Word of God. It was not a hard choice. I love the Lord Jesus Christ with all of my heart, soul, mind, and strength. He is truth. And regardless if the truth at times doesn't sit well, I had to love it and obey it. When I eventually put my study up on Facebook, it was just to share what the Lord opened up to me. I never even thought of angering people, women. Well, I was pretty much attacked, blocked, called a heretic, told to be silent that I did not understand scripture, told to be silent that I was too young in the Lord, and told I did not know the voice of God. Some were longtime friends. One was a relation, a few more Christian sisters, all with one thing in common, adulterous marriages that I did not even know about. And each one let me know that God has forgiven them and they are under grace and I am wrong. Some were married before. Some were married to someone who was married before, but all call themselves born again Christians yet refuse to believe what the Word of God says concerning remarriage if your spouse is still alive. Jesus said, Let no man put asunder, separate, tear apart, divide into what God has joined together, made one flesh. Marriage is a very special covenant. It is not a contract that can be broken. Marriage is a picture of Jesus, our bridegroom, and the church, his purified bride. God is not a covenant breaker. But people will say, yeah, but God divorced Israel, his wife. Yes, he did. And he also has told them to come back to him. He also said, one day they will call him husband and no more master. He told Hosea to literally go marry a prostitute and told him she will not be faithful. She will continue to sell herself. But then God told Hosea, you go buy your wife back and bring her home. Hosea did just that, but he did not lay with her for a while as a husband until she learned reverence, fear, respect for her husband. Then Hosea treated her as a wife once again, and she never left him again. Joshua made a covenant under trickery with the enemy. When he was told he was tricked, he wanted to break the covenant, but God refused to let him. Why? Because God does not break covenants. That covenant that Joshua made, hundreds of years later, King Saul broke it. And guess what happened? God held the rain and sent a famine. David asked God what was happening, and God told him that what Saul had done. God told him to, to go to the Gibeonites and ask them what needs to be done to heal the broken covenant. They said to hang seven of Saul's sons. After it was done, the protection of the hand of God came back to Israel. Go to Joshua chapter 9. Starting in verse 3. And when the inhabitants of Gibeon heard what Joshua had done unto Jericho and to Ai, they did work wily and went and made it as if they had been ambassadors and took old sacks upon their asses and wine bottles, old and rent and bound up, and old shoes and clouted upon their feet and old garments upon them and all the bread of their provision was dry and moldy. And they went to Joshua into the camp of Gilgal and said unto him and to the men of Israel, We be come from a far country. Now therefore make ye a league with us. And the men of Israel said unto the Hivites, Peradventure ye dwell among us, and how should we make a league with you? And they said unto Joshua, We are thy servants. And Joshua said unto them, Who are ye, and from whence come ye? And they said unto him, From a very far country thy servants are come because of the name of the Lord thy God. For we heard 
the fame of him and all that he did in Egypt and all that he did to the two kings of the Amorites that were beyond Jordan, to Sihon, king of Heshbon, and to Og, king of Bashan, which was at Ashtaroth. Wherefore our elders and all the inhabitants of our country spake to us, saying, Take victuals with you for the journey, and go to meet them, and say unto them, We are your servants. Therefore now make ye a league with us. This our bread we took hot for our provision out of our houses on the day we came forth to come to go unto you. But now, behold, it is dry and moldy. And these bottles of wine which we filled were new, and behold, they be rent. And these garments and shoes are become old by reason of the very long journey. And the men took of their victuals and asked not counsel at the mouth of God. And Joshua made peace with them and made a league with them to let them live. And the princes of the congregation swear unto them. Go down to verse 18. <clears throat> and the children of Israel smote them not, because the princes of the congregation had sworn unto them by the Lord God of Israel. And all the congregation murdered, murmured against the princes. But all the princes said unto all the congregation, We have sworn unto them by the Lord God of Israel. Now therefore we may not touch them. This we will do to them. We will even let them live, lest wrath be upon us, because of the oath which we swear unto them. And the princes said unto them, Let them live, but let them be hewers of wood and drawers of water unto all the congregation, as the princes had promised them. And Joshua called for them, and he spake unto them, saying, Wherefore have ye beguiled us, saying, We are very far from you? when ye dwell among us. Now therefore ye are cursed, and there shall none of you be freed from being bondmen and hewers of wood and drawers of water for the house of my God. David avenges the Gibeonites. Go to Second Samuel starting at verse uh, chapter twenty one starting at verse one. Then there was a famine in the days of David three years, year after year. And David inquired of the Lord, and the Lord answered, It is for Saul and for his bloody house, because he slew the Gibeonites. And the king called the Gibeonites and said unto them, Now the Gibeonites were not of the children of Israel, but of the remnant of the Amorites, and the children of Israel had sworn unto them. And Saul set to slay them in his zeal to the children of Israel and Judah. Wherefore David said unto the Gibeonites, What shall I do for you, and wherewith shall I make the atonement, that ye may bless the inheritance of the Lord? And the Gibeonites said unto him, We will have no silver, nor gold of Saul, nor of his house, neither for us shalt thou kill any man in Israel. And he said, What ye shall say? That will I do for you. And they answered the king, The man that consumed us and that devised against us that we should be destroyed from remaining in any of the coast of Israel, let seven men of his sons be delivered unto us, and we will hang them up unto the Lord in Gibeah of Saul, whom the Lord did choose. And the king said, I will give them. But the king spared Mesopopheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, because of the Lord's oath that was between them, between David and Jonathan, the son of Saul. But the king took the two sons of Respa, the daughter of Ea, whom she bare unto Saul, Armani, and Mesa. I can't pronounce that name. I just can't. And the five sons of Michael, the daughter of Saul, whom she brought up for Adriel, the son of Barzeli, the Mahalanite. And he delivered them into the hands of the Gibeonites, and they hanged them in the hill 
before the Lord. And they fell, all seven together, and were put to death in the days of the harvest, in the first days, in the beginning of barley harvest. Go down to verse 14. And the bones of Saul and Jonathan, his son, buried they in the country of Benjamin, in Zela, in the sepulchre of Kish, his father. And they performed all that the king commanded. And after that, God was entreated for the land. Family in Christ, please understand this. God holds the marriage covenant in a much higher standard because it is a picture of Christ and his church. When someone holds the truth but remains silent in fear of offending, being unfriended, hated, blocked, or called names by those who claim to be Christians, though they will be judged, but so will you for choosing silence rather than truth. Ignorance is not bliss, nor does God wink at sin. Jesus was very clear so simple that a child can understand it. If you divorce, do not remarry. If you do, you are in adultery. But not only you, but the one you married is as well. I'm not calling anyone an adulterer. I'm telling you what the scriptures say about it. I have posted a few men of God that has integrity and have lived a life for God that has many to testify of their lives. These men have taught on this. God brought them to me after he taught me this in order to confirm and reconfirm and then again reconfirm his word to me. I do this out of love and concern for so many the words of Christ sometimes haunt me when it comes to this subject because I am reminded where he said, and I'm going to paraphrase here, that many will come to him in that day and say, Lord, did I not do this? Did I not do that? And he will say, depart from me. I never knew you, you who work iniquity. Iniquity is lawlessness and adultery is breaking the law of God. Why do you call me Lord? and not do what I told you. I do not want anyone's blood on my hands. I do not want anyone to go to hell. So if me telling you the truth makes you my enemy, at least I have told you the truth. I love you all. Luke chapter 6 verses 46 to 49. And why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Whosoever cometh to me and heareth my sayings and doeth them, I will show you what I will show you to whom he is like. He is like a man which built an house and dig deep and laid the foundation on a rock. And when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently upon that house and could not shake it, for it was founded upon a rock. But he that heareth and doeth not is like a man that without a foundation built an house upon the earth, again against which the stream did beat vehemently, and it fell, and immediately it fell, and the ruin of that house was great. So now I have my answer from Holy Scripture. And I am very satisfied and embrace the truth that he has opened to me. I will remain single and be content with it. I am very blessed to be able to dedicate my entire life and time to the Lord. Because if I was married, my time would have to be shared with my husband, as Apostle Paul tells us. There is no hope for reconciliation with my first husband. He is remarried and they share a wonderful life with a daughter they adopted from China. I do pray for their salvation, and I pray for them as well as so many, praying all will learn the truth in Scripture. Second Timothy three, twelve 
12 through 17. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. You can disagree with the word of God, but your denial does not change the word of God. The word of God will judge us all. We must get our life lined up with it. Mark chapter 10, 6 through 9. But from the beginning of the creation, God made them male and female. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife. And they shall, and they twain shall be one flesh. So when they are no more twain, but one flesh, what therefore God hath joined together, let no man put asunder. I want to take you over to the book of Romans. And it is, let me see right here, chapter 1. I want you to understand this right here. I'm going to read Romans chapter 1. Mm -mm -mm. Starting at verse 29. Well, let's go to 28. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness, <clears throat> fornication, wickedness, covetedness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, and whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud boasters, inventor of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection. Hold on, I need to drink real quick. <clears throat> oh, forgive me. Without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who, knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. What I wanted to point out to you is Romans chapter 1, verse 31. Covenant breakers. Covenant breakers. Marriage is a covenant created by God and if your husband is a wife beater divorce him but you remain single pure and simple you remain single if he is a cheater a pedophile sodomite whatever divorce him separate yourself from him but you remain single you must you cannot remarry. That is the word of God. Whether we like it or not, that's truth. And the truth shall stand. And the truth shall set you free. We must love the truth. Because if you do not love the truth, you will be deceived. Absolutely, positively deceived. Because it says, the word of, it says in the word of God that he, God, will send a strong delusion upon those who love not the truth. 
that they will believe a lie and be damned. I love you all so very, very much. I know this is a heavy word, but you know what? I've got to get it out there. I've got to get it out there. You know, God, let me have a little reprieve, I guess, for just a couple of months. But now it's full force. And the reason being is because time is drawing to a close. It's drawing to a close. And there's many that's sitting in the church pews, not only in the pews, but behind the pulpit, in the choir that are living in adultery. They are living in sin and they're not even aware of it because of lies that was brought into the church. I'm telling you, the word of God is very serious. Get into it, study it out, search these things, know the truth, know the word of God. All right, brothers and sisters, I love you with all of my heart. Keep your eyes on Jesus, your nose in the book and embed the word of God upon the tablets of your heart so you will not sin against God. I love you all so very much. You have a great night. Bye-bye.